shit. Thursday is our prison packing day. So um, we are prison packing. We do that twice a year. We pack bags for the prison, and um, it's for Cabarrus County, and it's going to be Thursday beginning at 10 a.m., and it's in the community room. You can just drop in and help pack if um, you're available. On July the 15th, which is next week, we're going to do Medicist. And Medicist is a program where you can get free over-the-counter medications. And the information on that is in our uh, weekly email. And you can share that with anybody. Uh, all you have to do is drop by to pick up your bag. And so it's a really awesome program, part of our health, health ministry um, here at Forest Hill. So please check that out. And then we have a kids movie night coming on July the 22nd. And so that's going to be a really fun time um, for us to gather together and um, have some time with our kids. So lots of things happening. Stay tuned to the email. If you're not getting our emails, please just call the church office and we will get you on the list. Of course, we are closed on Monday for the 4th of July. So wait till Tuesday. But we would love to send that out to you. So with all those things rolling around in our minds, I invite you to stand as we center our hearts in prayer. Holy and loving Lord, we give you thanks for this day that you have created. We give you thanks for this space to come and to worship and to praise you. We thank you for the many ways that you love us, that you call us, that you center us. And Lord, in this time, may you send your Holy Spirit upon us to quiet our hearts and our minds so that we may worship you with all that we have and all that we are. Amen. Good morning. My soul cries out with a joyful shout that the God of my heart is great. And my spirit sings of the wondrous things that you bring to the ones who played. You fixed your sight on the servant's plight, and my weakness you did not spurn. So from east to west shall my name be blessed, could the world be about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to I am small, my God, my all, you work great things in me. And your mercy will last from the depths of the past to the ends of the age to be. Your very name puts the proud to shame, and to those who would for you yearn. You will show your might, put the strong to flight, for the world is about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. From the halls of power to the fortress tower, not a stone will be left on stone. Let your king beware, for your justice tears every tyrant from his throne. The hungry poor shall weep no more for the food they can never earn. There are tables spread, every mouth be fed, for the world is about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. rage from age to age we remember who holds us fast god's mercy must deliver us from the conqueror's rushing grass the saving word that our forebears heard is a promise which holds us bound till the spear and rod can be crushed by god who is turning the world around my heart shall sing of the day you bring let the fires of your justice burn Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, let
let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears for the dawn draws near. And the world is about to turn. God, we thank you so much for this place that we gather in to worship, to respond to your love and your grace for all of us. Uh, and in so we sing praise to you. We give you thanks for the ways that we experience your love in our life, and we extend and share that love with others. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. to 
break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. You may be seated. about now I feel like Goldilocks which one fits me this is better um, so also this this week we have transitions we are welcoming Megan into a new role as our director of children's ministries and Justin um, has officially become our associate pastor. We will actually celebrate. Oh, let's, yes, go ahead, cheer. Cheer, whatever. Um, in the United Methodist Church, this is called Transition Sunday, which means you are officially appointed, but you don't have to be in your place of worship. So we actually will do his um, fixing of the appointment and celebration next week, but he's here anyway because we didn't give him a break. <laughs> Not only did we not give him a break, he's going on the mission trip. So um, he really did maybe not get the best end of that deal. But we're glad that you're here on your very first Sunday, um, and we celebrate that transition. We give thanks for Bible school, which I heard was amazing. Scott and Amanda and Rebecca did an awesome job. We're really thankful for their leadership, and so many people stepped up to do, to do that while, um, while I was away. And I'm sorry I missed it. I heard it was great. We continue to pray for our bilingual preschool and um, Scout Troop 888 is going to Philmont. They actually left yesterday, and they're going to be gone until July the 16th, and they're hiking 70 miles in 12 days. This is grueling. They've been training for it, and we're so excited um, for them. And then, of course, we have our mission trip leaving for CCC, and Wes will talk a little bit more about that. And I just want to say that, um, first off, I had a great trip, got to enjoy some time away with Grace. But while I was gone, I just want you to know that your staff is awesome and amazing. They have gone above and beyond to make sure that everybody has been cared for. Uh, I think Wes had one day the whole time I was gone that he was not at the hospital um, visiting. And just a lot has happened and transpired um, over the last few weeks. And I am grateful and just want you to know that y'all should be really proud of your staff because they really stepped up in incredible ways. Um, Nurse Angie literally was saving lives um, in the time that and two weeks ago with Dan, um, really incredible ministry that she was able to do. Justin kept everything in the road. Uh, Megan has actually been hiring for our nursery, and we celebrate that we have a new nursery worker. And um, Sydney has just gone above and beyond. She's learning so much and dealing with so much. So we're just grateful. I am grateful for the incredible ministry um, and just hope that you will hug them all and tell you how much um, you love them because we really are blessed with an amazing staff. So with all that, um, let us pray. 
patient and loving God, we sit on the eve of a national holiday in which we celebrate freedom and independence. We expect to hear the mighty strains of marching bands and to see flags flying around us. We pause to think about what it means to live in this particular part of your amazing world. Yet you have called us to think bigger and remember that it is you who gives us true independence and hope through your healing and restoring love. The oppression of disease, poverty, terrorism, and division pours into our lives and lays claim to our spirits. We feel as though we are again in bondage. Free us, O Lord. Open our hearts to receive your healing words of comfort and hope. Enable us to be people who offer your compassion in the presence of sorrow, hope in the presence of desolation, light in the presence of darkness, unity in the presence of division, and love in the presence of hate. Walk with us and strengthen us. Give us spirits of eagerness to serve and witness to your love. We bring many people to you that are near and dear to us in these moments of worship. Those that we have spoken with our voices, the family of Ed, Jim, Dan, Cindy, Evelyn, Dawn, Carolyn, Becky, and Angie. We lift up Maureen and Lindsay and Kathy and David. We pray for the family of Brenda. We celebrate that we have so much joy, the gift of Bible, Bible school, the gift of people who serve in ministry. We lift up to you our Boy Scouts as they travel and ask for safety. And we ask that they will have an amazing and grand adventure. All of these things we have lifted with our voices. And Lord, there is so much that we carry in our hearts, things that we have not lifted, but you know. You know deeply because you know us deeply. And so we lift all of these things to you. We ask for your healing mercies and your blessings. Help us to remember that we stand in need of blessings and we stand in need of healing in our own hearts. Help us to receive the blessings that you offer to us and to use the gifts in which you have entrusted to us to serve you, to be bold and prophetic witnesses to your love, to be strong enough to say the places that we see your grace and to empower others to see how much you bless their lives. This, Lord, is a gift that you have entrusted us with. We thank you for the many ways that you love us, and we lift all of these things in the strong and faithful name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. So our offertory comes from Acts 2, verses 42 through 44. The believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the community, and to their shared meals and prayers. A sense of awe came over everyone. God performed many wonders and signs through the apostles, and all the believers were united and shared everything. So Grace and I got back from our grand adventure on Friday. It was a great trip. We had so much fun, and we have a lot of funny memories that we share. Some of the memories are funny now, that weren't funny then. You know what I'm talking about? So since Grace was in middle school, we had this rule in our family. You can pack as much as you want, but you have to be responsible for carrying it. You see, that was easier than regulating my daughter, who literally would have taken her bathroom sink if she could have. She must have carried with her 20 pounds of products for her hair and her face on this very trip alone. And so we had a lot of baggage. We had a lot of baggage. And even though somebody had warned me and advised me not to take too much stuff, I let Grace help me pack. And I had a lot of baggage. We had two days in London before we went to Ireland. It was a pretty long trip, so we had, you know, had to carry all of our stuff. And so we arrived in London, and we decided to take the express train from Heathrow Airport into the center of London. 
we felt like this was a good idea. I had done the research. It was going to be pretty fast and easy in just a couple transfers once we got into the center of London. And so we began our journey. And the express train wasn't very far. It was actually in the airport terminal. And so as I began to go, my suitcase, it just wasn't wanting to roll quite right. And I thought, it's okay. I'm going to get the hang of this. Well, I had a big, you know, almost 50-pound bag and then a smaller carry-on that I had put on top of it and stacked it. The weight of the smaller carry-on was kind of crushing the bag underneath it, and it was beginning to be a problem. And I thought, mm, no, it's okay. I can do this because I think I can do anything. I can do it. So we began to go. We get on the express train. I'm like, okay, this isn't too bad. Well, we got off. We needed to change trains, um, and we got on a different tube. And, uh, but in order to get there, there were steps, not an escalator, steps. So Grace trucks up the steps. She's got it handled. Two bags on each shoulder, this big bag behind her. She is doing great. I, on the other hand, look stupid. Shouldn't say that in church. I look like an American woman. I am, I wish I had my mic. I was pulling it like this. Up the stairs, struggling. And people were walking by me, and they were looking at me. And Grace did not want to be associated with me, even though we're in a foreign country with people who are never going to see me again. She's 50 feet in front of me, acting like nothing is happening, and I am struggling. And people are beginning to ask, hey, Mandy, or, well, they didn't know my name, hey, would you like some help? But no, I don't want any help. I don't want any help because you don't pack what you can't carry, and I was feeling very proud and determined, which, y'all know me, that's unusual, right? So we finally got to the hotel. Oh, we were going through the gate on the way out of the tube, which I was excited we were leaving. The gate closed on my luggage, not on the other side, on my luggage. The gate attendant had to come and unlock it to dislodge my suitcase. By the time we got to the hotel, I was tired and I was sore. I, there were so many people who tried to help me along the way, but my pride and my stubbornness, it got in the way. I began to think about that and reflect on that, think about how I could grow and be a better person. And I kind of thought about what it means to live in community. To live in community means that we're going to have to set aside some of our insecurities. Sometimes we have to admit that we need help, that we have gotten ourselves in over our head. Sometimes we are the ones that get to offer the help. We can support others and love them even when they are in over their heads. And what happens when we live like that is that all of our lives are easier. We get the blessing of giving and of receiving. We become a family that works together for the common good. And in my experience, when we live like that as a community of faith, giving and receiving and asking God to bless what we have, we always have enough. I had a wonderful time with Grace. As always, I'm learning and growing. I am happy to be home with my people. So happy I can't even start worship on time. To be here with my family of faith. To be reminded of what it means to live in a communal relationship. To give places of thanks for sharing and receiving and the good work that we do together in the name of Jesus our Lord. It is good to be in a place where we can live together, where we don't have to be perfect, where we can say we're in over our head or offer a helping hand to give of our gifts to worship and to praise God and to live together with things in common. That is good and holy work, and it is a gift that God gives us. May we lean in to that communal giving and living together so that we can continue to love each other with the love of Christ. I invite you to stand and join in singing. So we were at annual conference this year, and I had opportunity to be a part of a worship team for a service. And this, new, this next song is a new one that you don't know, but it was just so fun, I thought, well, we're going to do it. So this is We Will Make No Peace with Oppression. the 
Matthew begins his gospel talking about a genealogy and spends a whole chapter doing that just about. And then talks about the birth of Jesus, talks about the wise men who come to visit. Then we have the portion where he, John the Baptist shows up and preaches and Jesus goes and gets baptized and goes out in the wilderness as tempted. And then he comes back and calls his disciples. And then at the beginning of chapter 5, Jesus goes up on a mountain and sits down and teaches, and he teaches for the next three chapters, five, six, and seven. It's what we call the Sermon on the Mount. It's about life. It's about how to live. It's about how to order your life and and be in relationship with God. At the end of that chapter, he offers this short story that every little child has learned in Bible school or Sunday school along the way. He says, at the end of teaching, he says, everyone then who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a sensible man who builds his house on rock. Down came the rain and up came the floods while the winds blew and roared against that that house, but it did not fall because its foundations were on rock. 
And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not follow them can be compared with a foolish man who built his house on sand. Down came the rain and up came the floods, while the winds blew and battered that house till it collapsed and fell with a great crash. Let us pray. O oh God, in these moments we come to offer you our words, my words, the words that run around inside our hearts and minds. They're words that we ask you to gather together in your mysterious way so that we hear your word of life for us today. Amen. He was born in the southeast corner of Alabama on a family farm in Henry County. He grew up on the farm and went to high school and when he graduated went away to Southern College, which is now part of Birmingham Southern in uh, Birmingham. Then he went and became a missionary to Korea. She was born in Kentucky and after studying math in college went to Korea also as a missionary. As was the custom in those days, single missionaries went out together because nobody was willing to ask, always willing to ask somebody to be married to them and go on the mission field. So single missionaries went out together and when they got there, they married, they courted and married each other and, and that's what happened. Lyman met Myrtle and they got married and they had three children. Two sons who both died while they were young and are buried in Korea, and a daughter named Margaret. Margaret was born in Wonsan, Korea. Went to school in Pyongyang to a mission school there, when that is now the capital of North Korea. And then she came to the U.S. and went to Berea College, and after graduating Berea, did graduate study at Westminster Choir College in New Jersey and Skerritt College in Nashville, Tennessee. And then she found a job at Central United Methodist, a Central Methodist Church in Asheboro as religious education director and music director. After she'd been there a year or so, she went on what was called a youth caravan in those days. That was groups of youth who went to the mountains to put on programs in mountain churches who didn't have a lot of youth, and, and so it was a summer program. And while she was on that trip with them, they were driven around by a young uh, Methodist minister who had just graduated from Divinity School, who had grown up in Charleston, West Virginia. And at the end of the week, Carl looked at Margaret and said, will you marry me? Well, there are lots of details to work out to do that. So it was October before they could finally get married, and they got married. They had four children, one son and three daughters. The son was called to answer the call to the ministry, went to Duke Divinity School and he graduated and then wandered around Western North Carolina serving churches where the bishops sent him. And in 2012, he retired. But then in 2021, his phone rang and he was asked a question and there was silence as they waited for a reply. But the question led to more questions and more talk and more discussion. And then finally there was a reply. And he said, yes, Mandy, I'll come. And Mandy said, thank you, Wes, and I'll talk to the DS. Now, yesterday when Mandy talked about it, she said she she told uh, Janice, I sweet-talked Wesley <laughs> into coming here, Wes into coming here. Uh, I remember it more as straight talk. Uh, maybe that's not urgent. Yeah, that may be so. But I'm going to preach on straight talk in, in uh, Dolly's straight song on straight talk in, in, uh, in August. But I think it was more institutional talk as much as anything else. But anyway... I came here, and when the appointments were released, there was my name, associate pastor at Forest Hill, and it's been a gift for me to be here. Now, that's how I came to be here at Forest Hill. How did you get here? Did you grow up in the church? 
Did you move here? Did someone invite you to come and be a part of the church? Did you stumble into the church like happens sometimes? Did we just find our way there? We all have a story to tell about how we got into this church, how we come here to worship God and to serve God. The story is more than just how we got to Forest Hill. The story is about how we get connected to God, how we get connected to one another, how we get connected so we reach out to the world around us to serve God and to react with love and joy in the world. Now, our t-shirts talk about that, don't they? Love, grow, learn. That's, what we, that's who we are and how we serve God here at this church. When we're connected, my feeling is when we're connected, we're like an electrical, electrical connection that's all put together. The current flows when we're connected. Connected in worship, connected in learning and growing, connected as people together, connected in service. When that all is working together, it's like power runs through us. Or as I just read, I think it's like building your faith on a rock. Now, when I was a little boy, uh, I can't imagine it being four, but uh, where I picture myself being, I would have been four, but I think it was a lot more like two or three. I was sitting, mom and dad set me on a counter, and there was a set of keys on that counter. And behind the counter on the wall was an electric socket. And being a curious little boy and maybe an adventurous little boy, I took the key and put it in the socket and got the shock of my life. My body shook. I didn't tell anybody, but I knew I wasn't supposed to do that again. So I felt the current. I felt the connection that was bound when I put that key in there. Now, the question that we have to ask ourselves along the way is, do we feel that current when we come to worship, when we take communion, when we watch somebody be baptized, when we have a great week in vacation Bible school like we did this week, when we enjoy being in Sunday school, when we help in the clothing closet, which is right beneath us, when we pack bags for prisoners, That current, that connection in religious terms is what we call the Holy Spirit working in our lives and in the church. See, God is at work in this world. I have no doubt about that. God is at work in our everyday lives, and he's working through ordinary people, not special people. Mandy talked about ordinary time last week. I was going to expounds on that, but I'm not too. Ordinary time for me is a focus on everyday life. That God is present in the everydayness of our lives. We have a Christmas, uh, uh, Advent, Christmas, Epiphany cycle, circle. We have a Lent, Easter, Pentecost circle. Those are focused on certain issues and certain thoughts, and they draw our attention that way. And you all know that Mandy loves the hardness of Lent. If you don't know, you can't live here long without knowing that. Uh, But for me, ordinary time has nothing to do with any particularly organized thing. It has to do with everyday humdrum, the monotony of life, the struggles with illness, the mundane boredom of school that sometimes feels fills us, the rut of the routine. We are reminded of this reality that God is present in the everydayness when we take communion, when we see a baptism, because God used everyday common elements, water for baptism, bread and wine or grape juice for communion. These common elements that we use remind us that God is a part of our everyday lives. 
You know, some folks don't like to take communion very often. They feel it loses its special sense of what's going on. But for me, the everydayness of communion, taking communion on a regular basis, reminds me that we are loved every day, that we are fed to live for God every day. It reminds us that we are never walking alone in this world. Now, we have a group that's going to Carolina's Cross Connection this week. I would say they're going to hell. It's going to be as hot as that, but I'm uh, uh, But it's going to be hot, and they're going to be outside the whole week working. Uh, and we're going to pray for them later on and send them off. They go to help, to care, to share, to brighten the days and lives of people with a reminder that God is present in all of our lives, that God loves us every day of our lives, that God loves our company just being with us. And that's true not only for the CCC team that goes, it's true for you, all of you, all of us. Every day, God can use any one of us to make a difference in somebody's life. Let us pray. Oh God, we pray for Gavin and Miles and Olivia and Lauren and Charlotte and Justin and Mandy as they work this week at Carolina's Cross Connection. Be with them as they work in the hot sun, building, cleaning, meeting people, sharing and helping with different projects. May they be supported by the Holy Spirit. As they worship and meet folks from other churches, may they find their faith growing. As they experience the intersection of love and service, may they find a spark of joy that impels them in the days and years ahead to have the courage to step out in faith and help others. Bless them with health and strength. Keep them safe. Let them discover the goodness of being weary from doing good. Surround Mandy and Justin with patience and energy, and let them sleep well each night. Amen. What a privilege it is to come to this ordinary and extraordinary table this morning. I invite you to join with me in the liturgy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up, your vo- lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through the prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name name, and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy 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 Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven heaven and earth earth are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By your Spirit, you anointed him to preach the good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, and recovery to the sight of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many. For as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. 
And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray together. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. This is not Forest Hill's table. This is not the United Methodist table. This is the Lord's table. And all those who love Jesus are welcome at this table. Come as you feel led to spend time in prayer um, with God who loves you so very much.
favor be upon you and the thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. May his presence go before you and behind you and beside you. children with my blessing never alone waking sleeping I am with you you are my own in my love's baptismal water I have made you mine for children with my blessing you are my own amen <clears throat> <clears throat>